people's mindset of environmental issues are so different. Some some people, uh, you know, no, 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 we we don't have any issues or anything. But but I don't know if they are they don't see or they're not close. I mean, they have that land in them like we do, you know. social networks. Whether for fun or for work, we log into apps that create social networks to help us communicate. But what is a social network? A social network defines who or what is interacting within a certain area. Analyzing these networks helps us understand relationships. Social network analysis is a new tool that measures how powerful or collaborative actors are. This information can help society make informed decisions on how to improve relationships. It can help us address environmental injustice by identifying the most and least powerful actors in a network. The Potomac River watershed covers four states and the District of Columbia. It flows through some of the most rural landscapes, as well as the heart of the nation's capital. It is home to more than 5 million people, thousands of different species of birds, fish, mammals, and insects. It's the second largest watershed in the Chesapeake Bay, which is the largest estuary in North America. Its forested lands play a crucial role in stabilizing stream banks, absorbing rainwater, and filtering polluted runoff. Due to efforts by activists and governments, the river's health has improved over the years. However, it is still not safe enough to swim in or fish. They, you know, they have a, a lot of runoff in a particular creek because of erosion and about too many houses, but that feeds right into the Potomac also. Yeah. And then you got the power plants, Possum yes, Point, Possum with Point. the ash ponds, Monica. and all those people that live at Possum Point, they've had cancer of some type. Local water pollution sources include nutrients from fertilizers, pesticides, and street dirt, E. coli from sewage, PCBs from banned industrial activities, and trash from illegal dumping. With rapid population rise and deforestation, polluted runoff is increasing. It's like all the runoff that's going to come from clear cut that, building on the south side of the I mean, the creek is already in bad shape from all the runoff and everything that's happened over yes. the years. Too much. And it's just going to make this body of water is an important source of drinking water, food, industry, and green space for so many living things. You've got the big government, and how does that affect? I mean, you know, Dominion Energy and the coal ash, they, you know, there was a, a big bill, and I met the lady that had the cancer, and her kids, and they had to drink the bottled water, and they you know, the shower, and... It, it was a mess. Despite being key to civilization and the home of countless environmental injustices, no social network analysis of the watershed has been done before. With government, indigenous, private business, and public interest in the Potomac River, who or what could possibly manage such a precious resource? And are they doing a good job? So Potomac ancestors have lived in this area for at least 15,000 years, based on archaeological evidence that's been found. The primary villages are right around Potomac Creek. Those villages are the ones that John Smith encountered when he came here in 1608. Other indigenous groups with ancestral ties to the river include the Piscataway Kanoi Confederacy, Piscataway Indian Nation, Monacan Nation, and the Matapani Tribe. The Potomac River is where they all supported their communities and helped keep the balance of nature. We lived in those areas up until late like the 1650s, 1660s time period. Around that time, European uh, settlement made its way up here, um, and a lot of our people were kind of pushed out off their land. Although the Potomac and the Piscataway are some of the few state-recognized Potomac River tribes today, their numbers and influence in the region have dwindled. In the 1600s, European colonization triggered increasing competition, ecological degradation, and environmental injustices in the pursuit of wealth. Nowadays, how many Potomac Indians are Yeah, but it used to be all. Right. It used to be all. Right. Yeah. And so now I think the water becomes so much more important for us because that's the one thing nobody can know. We can still be out there and do what we've always done. We may not be able to farm on the land we always farm or hunt on it or anything like that, but we can still get out there on the water with our ancestors and fishing thousands of years. Yeah, that's our comfort place. We go down there and that's home. But, but look at the water quality. You have the dead zones yes. that come through. You've got the red tides. That it's it's just it makes you want to cry when you pull the pot and there's all crap it is. It got into the, the red tide keepers. 
decreasing fish stocks, rising sea levels, increased storms, pollution, and more development. These are all the issues that face the Potomac River today. Everything up Potomac Creek and all around it has been built up with subdivisions, apartment lots, data centers, everything else, all of that stuff is running into the water. It's silt Potomac Creek in the Arctic and up in more so shallow. It's not small farmers like people in our community that are in through that. That's not what's killing the water and fish. It's these big developments that are going in. So there's no trees? No. There's no grasses anymore to kind of keep that runoff from really getting into the river? And no marshes to filter. Right. Well, at all. These environmental issues do not impact all communities equally. Disadvantaged communities like indigenous groups and low-income communities are bearing the brunt of these environmental disasters. But those of us who are here have deep roots in our own family are left home in that These communities are often in vulnerable areas near wastewater treatment facilities, flood zones, isolated, or under-resourced. They are subject to poor management without a chance for meaningful participation in decisions. To get accountability for these injustices, we need to know who or what is causing management issues. I turned to the web to see if I could get a better idea of the Potomac River social network. Using Google, I set out to see who was working on, funding, or connected to actions that impact Potomac River management. In my analysis, nonprofits were identified as the most well-connected and influential actors in managing the Potomac River. State government, academic institutions, and federal government also have a lot of influence in Potomac River decision making. The least influential actors include citizens and indigenous groups. In terms of like, government helping deal with environmental issues, make the developers deal with those environmental issues instead of just letting them continue to build and destroy what people who have lived here for a long time have been able to depend on. I would think that some of the government agencies would help give y'all a grant. Well, because Potomac's in a compact, the senator from Virginia and the senator from Maryland came, it was like a historic event. But the problem is the way they did the compact, there's a very minimal amount of money that was agreed to be given. And now the states are like, well, I'm not giving it until you give. <laughs> I'm not giving it until you give. So the like can work it out. Well. <laughs> So maybe that's a vision for a future like intergovernment and interagency. Inter there have been some government-led efforts to be more inclusive in the recent years. Sometimes there are some organizations that you get involved with, and once you get involved with them, lots of different doors start to open. It comes toward things like you know fighting for recognition, for trying to get our voices out there, for things like managing you know the environment. I think being a peninsular group hurts you. The low social network scores of indigenous groups and citizens show that inclusion of underserved communities in management could be improved. This is supported by the ongoing fights for environmental justice and inclusion still occurring today in the watershed. One solution would be for these influential actors to dedicate permanent and meaningful resources to better include indigenous and other disadvantaged communities in management within the Potomac River watershed. I think there are a lot of people out there that think like, oh, if you leave it wild, it takes care of itself. Right. But that's actually not true and has never been true. It's always required management to keep mm -hmm. a population of something where it needs to be. I hope for the future of the river would be help that management along. Yeah. You know, and, and more people become watermen, even mm -hmm. if it's just part time and understand like mm -hmm. how that management really affects the health of the water. Yeah. And I would like to see more people get involved and step up for that management to say, hey, you work these waters, you need to listen to us. You know, we're in the tribe. We've been doing this forever. And that's some representation that I'm sitting here thinking about has never happened.